All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Away from aviation and the issue of health, that we're talking politics right now, and specifically we're looking at uh, you know the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, with report uh, saying that the president has uh, returned it back to the National uh, Assembly. Let me just give a bit of um, of a background from some papers that we have here. Uh, let me just go straight to uh, the vanguard. Uh, the confusion in the polity was uh, probable uh, over the president Muhammad Buhari's report refusal to assent uh, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. President Buhari reportedly wrote leaders of the two chambers of the National Assembly after refusing to sign the bill into law because of the huge cost of conducting direct primaries, among other reasons. Now, spokesmen of the Senate and House of Representatives denied knowledge of President Buhari's rejection letter as a host of federal legislators contacted on the matter uh, kept uh, mum. Uh, we have a guest uh, who will be joining us uh, to look at all of the issues. Uh, uh, starting right now, we have uh, on Larry Waji Suraj. He is a, a public affairs um, analyst. Uh, many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's talk about uh, this Electoral Act Amendment Bill. I mean, pressure, you know, or pressures are just mounting everywhere, specifically, you know, the issue of uh, direct or, no di or indirect uh, primaries. From what we are reading, the president has uh, reportedly uh, refused signing. In your opinion, uh, don't you think uh, the direct primaries is what will do the nation's elections, uh, or in the, uh, you know, uh, elections really, you know, so much good? Uh, why are there so much rejections and so much concerns as regards uh, this issue? Larry. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. We can hear you now. Okay, all right. I think the, we, we need to understand the history of our lawmaking uh, in Nigeria, especially since with the advent of uh, our civilian rule. Uh, and when you have um, issues uh, and also policies or laws that are capable of reducing uh, the individual power of our electoral, electoral office holder, uh, political office holders, you can expect this kind of Ula Balu, uh, and also so much bickering, manipulation, and the noise that you get to hear uh, from the process of uh, the enactment of the law. Uh, if you go down the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, the Freedom of Information Act, and also the um, Petroleum Industry Bill that became the Petroleum Industry Act, you, you would understand how long it took for these uh, laws and the host of others to get enacted into, into law based on the interests that are affected either negatively or those that will think um, for the fear of the unknown uh, needs to uh, reject the, the policy formulation. And that is exactly what you're experiencing with, with the uh, amendment of the Electoral Act, that basically because some of the, uh, particularly now it is shown that the governors uh, who are uh, even under the current dispensation of our uh, governance system in Nigeria and the civilian rule are even more powerful than the president of the National Assembly. Uh, this this uh, proposition of the direct uh, uh, <clears throat> Congress and process of electing uh, candidates obviously is a threat to the governors. Uh, the fact that it, it is not going to be in the, in the direct control of where few people can be gathered uh, and also the process of the primaries can be uh, manipulated. That is number one. Number two is the fact that we have not really been taking keen interest, which is very important for us, in the primaries of, of the political parties. Uh, forgetting that the primaries determines the final occupant of our political offices. So um, where we leave it as a party affair, where we are reduced to the fate accomplished of having to choose between the devil and the deep blue sea, when uh, the leading political parties are either coming with uh, a mix of armed robbers, uh, cyber criminals, scammers, and all the rest of that. And we, we would have no option than to choose between those options. Uh, so it, it is about the opportunity now, not only for INEC to keenly scrutinize the electoral process of the parties, but also for people to understand and see more how uh, candidates of the political parties are elected during and through the, the party.
Party primary. So uh, what is clear is also um, the manipulation. Uh, and I think it is important for political parties to also, I mean, sorry, the media uh, to uh, actually be a bit more circumspect by ensuring that we don't pander to the interest of those uh, that are at variance with the interest of the country. Uh, the interest of the country is paramount. And we have spent so much uh, for the electoral process. So now if we're going to spend the additional to have good governance, to entrench, you know, uh, party uh, influence, party supremacy over individuals, I, I think we should go uh, through that process and see what, what will be the benefit for our democratic consolidation. Uh, we should not be intimidated by the by the amount that, that is going to be involved uh, if INEC is already said to be in control and is capable of conducting the election. I, I think we should, we should manage it and, and go ahead with it. Mm. All right. Uh, for, for the sake that, let's also look at this now. Don't you think that at this point in time, we probably should be uh, done with the Electoral Act Amendment Bill? Because if, that, if the president has sent it, uh, it would therefore mean that it would guarantee electronic transmission of results. And we know the essence of time in preparation of our elections. It would require that INEC would need to put her acts together, get all of the equipment and what it is necessary to um, make poachers, and of course start the training uh, you know, immediately for some of this you know, equipment and gadgets that will be needed to conduct that election. So with that, don't you think at this point we should get with done with this bill? No, um, I, I think it is still within the realm of the possibility of INEC to meet up with the expectations. Um, you know, sometimes we're always just a little bit not uh, too uh, keen or giving necessary attention to details. I INEC has been electronically transmitting results uh, from polling stations uh, even before now. Uh, INEC has been transmitting accreditation electronically uh, before now. Uh, so the additional requirement of ensuring that the whole process uh, is foolproof. Uh, I mean, the look at the state governor's elections that are held in uh, Edo uh, and the two previous um, elections that were held, we're, we're actually done under this process. And what is but this is entirely different. We're going to be looking at election for 36 states. I mean, we can't say that we, the pockets of uh, transmission, it's just in few states. We're talking about 36 states mm -hmm. at this point in time. So that's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, what I'm telling you, no, there's nothing that is a lot of work there. What I'm telling you is that INEC has piloted it in those states, and we have seen the results. We have seen the inability or the difficulty uh, for manipulation of the result. We have seen the reduction of influence of human and manual uh, interference with the results and the process. So if we have had successful piloting in those states, then it means we're capable of expanding the capacity, uh, also stretching a little bit more, like you said, the training and whatever, and the deployment. Uh, to have that. The, the problem with us in Nigeria is not usually about the law. It, it's about our implementers. Uh, it, it is just, I, I can tell you, if we stop even making new laws today uh, and we implement the existing laws, Nigeria will be better than many of the developed countries that we, we seem to envy. Uh, our problem has been uh, our, not only the lawmakers alone, but even the implementers in the office, the executives, the civil servants, and even the judiciary are usually the problem because they're capable of not only misinterpreting the law, but also influencing uh, the undermining of the laws. So uh, there's no fear that we need to lose, but the fear is not about the viability of the process. The opposition is not about the viability of the law and the process. The opposition is about the people that are negatively going to be affected who are going to lose their dominance and control of the political process, who are not going to be the sole determiner of, of those who will um, occupy offices in the states. And that is the challenge that you have. Uh, like I said, many of our governments are not only responsible for uh, uh, appointing, uh, and because we don't even have election, or selecting 
those will become the local government chairmen and councillors in their state, except states where they have godfathers, uh, uh, and that's, those are the exception. But, but outside that, the determine who becomes, you know, um, the local, the council or the chairman at the local government level. They also determine who becomes, you know, uh, the state uh, house of assembly members. They determine who becomes the speaker. Uh, in many instances, they determine who becomes the senators from the state uh, and also the house of reps members. So there, there's so much power and influence that the governors, will, because the supremacy of the parties have been totally reduced, uh, basically because the parties only also get funding and support from the governors or if the president, uh, as the case may be. So they, that is why they call them uh, the leader of the party in the state, because they are usually the sole sponsor uh, of the party. So they control the party machineries. Uh, and that is where the electoral process, the new electoral act that is meant to uh, be reviewed, would technically reduce and whittle this power uh, that is weighed by individuals in, in the name of being governors. And that is, uh, as far as an average Nigerian politician is concerned, he is not bothered about uh, the implication of, uh, uh, of the opposition to the country or to the larger interest. He is looking at his own personal interest. So if the Electoral Act would guarantee all other um, uh, principles of democratization and electoral process, it will be getting and jeopardized uh, for that singular interest of, of, of the direct primaries that they are actually vehemently now opposed to. And I think some of them might not be far away from the propaganda uh, that is going around or the misinformation about the president, uh, you know, withholding assent to that bill. Because there's no official statement uh, ever from the president or from the National Assembly uh, to the effect of. Um, of the withdrawal of assets, uh, uh, but it's been already there uh, and it's been promoted. Unfortunately, uh, people are not allowed to look at the, the, the benefit and the real detail of the Electoral um, Act Amendment Bill, uh, uh, but we've just been reduced to the uh, direct and indirect primaries in, 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 that, that is also uh, captured in it. All right, um, um, Larry Waju, let's look at um, other angles to it. Uh, they have been talk about, uh, you know, financial or huge financial implications roughly right now. But um, some CSOs have come out to, you know, counter that, that uh, basically if you're talking of um, direct um, primaries, that uh, uh, the bulk of it does not really rest um, on INEC, but for the political parties, mm -hmm. you know. So what exactly mm -hmm. is the true picture? <clears throat> Well, the true picture of the, I mean, the INEC does not convene the primaries for the political parties. The business of INEC in the primaries of political parties is limited to uh, supervising the electoral process and also witnessing the, the primaries. So the, the so-called huge cost is, is nothing uh, for, uh, uh, for INEC to mount. And that was why INEC has also, uh, from some of your understanding, replied to the president to to say that it not only does it have the capacity to monitor the process, uh, the financial body is not going to be a problem for, for the electoral body. Uh, but th these are just the kind, some of these pins that, that are going around. There's really not so much additional financial body that INEX should be content with in dealing with monitoring the primaries. INEC will be there uh, anyway for most of the primaries that are conducted by the, by, by the parties. And any primary conducted by any of the political parties without the presence of INEC it is to the extent of that also uh, subject to nullification uh, a, a court of competent jurisdiction if challenged. So it is very important uh, for, for us to understand, and that, that's what I was talking about, understanding the details of, uh, of the bill beyond the propaganda that, that is there. Quite a number of people would um, comment on the bill, will also condemn or support the bill without even seeing it. But basically from the sentiments that are read on the pages of newspaper uh, and also uh, media reports. Uh, so, but I can tell you that it is not a problem that, that I may actually be worried about. There are some of even those problems or issues that goes beyond the Naira and Kobo. Uh, we can save a whole lot of money, uh, not only for the states, uh, but also for the country, uh, because if you if you imagine the amount of money that is spent by the governors, you know, on, on some of these elections, then then you would actually 
uh, weep for this country. Uh, and it is always about the election. Uh, look at the, uh, we, we had a meeting, uh, a program last week where we presented our uh, annual compendium on the 100 high profile corruption cases. Uh, and the lead prosecutor to EFCC, uh, Mr. Rotimi Jacobs, came around to also tell to the board that. And not only that is done about 20 cases of, of uh, former governors, uh, and of these 20 governors, the main issue has been about the um, security votes. And these security votes, uh, from almost the least of the country, the, the state with the least uh, uh, federal allocation, goes from about 250 million naira on a monthly basis to 2.5 billion for those with higher federal allocation on monthly basis, a security vote, sec on monthly basis. And when it comes to the election time, this would almost go like 10 times uh, to the government because this is what is used uh, not only for the general election, but also to buy delegates and the rest of them for uh, the, the party primaries. And we've heard how this was also done, uh, the, uh, at least if not for now, that we're yet to know about what's the current ruling party is doing. We heard what was done when it was about the primaries for uh, the PDP, uh, when monies were moved from Maida Central Bank or uh, NNPC uh, to pay delegates. Uh, and we've seen that also going to court. So we need to start working around the incentivizing uh, the process of you know uh, electoral officers or politically exposed persons buying the conscience of delegates uh, say uh, compromising you know, the electoral process to the inducement and use of, uh, of, of finances. Okay. Um, so uh, let's talk about, you know, all the benefits of having the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. I mean, apart from the fact that uh, it would guarantee uh, or give us the right to transmit our result electronically, uh, what other benefits do we have? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's an improvement on what has, what has been our whole electoral law. And that is why uh, some of the civil society also engage with the process to ensure that we, uh, we have, like I said, not necessarily what the parliamentarians and the politicians would expect to continue understanding and manipulating the existing law. It is to ensure that we make the law uh, to be dynamic and responds to the issues that are emerging. Uh, the moment that you see our politicians um, not only understanding the existing law, but manipulating it. So uh, for the, the system, for uh, the citizens, uh, we must learn um, uh, how to deal with the situation. So as much as the the birds are also learning to fly without passion. We must also learn how to shoot without missing. Uh, so th that was why you could see the response that you're getting from uh, the governor. So, you know, we, we must be able to uh, go ahead and see how, how much we want to deal with the situation. One of the other thing is the increase uh, in, in the limited uh, budget that is expected of uh, for the political office holders. Uh, in bidding for or contesting for offices. This has been increased. Uh, unfortunately for us, um, what we needed was the enforcement of what was there before uh, because there's been no compliance. Uh, and the increase in that now, uh, if not enforced again, will only just allow for increased uh, monetization of the electoral process. We would have loved to see INEC, but unfortunately, INEC is extremely overwhelmed and making it seriously difficult uh, right. for it to monitor the political financing uh, of, of, of the electoral process and ensure that candidates are kept within the ambit of the provided, you know, um, peg for right, them Larry. to spend on elections. All right, Larry, thank you so Can much. Can you hear me? You're going to say something very quickly. Uh, we're rounding off now. Yes, and I think the other one is the, um, the, uh, the, the Electoral Offenders Commission that we hope that would have the capacity uh, to deal with the prosecution of electoral offenses. Uh, the cases uh, are almost just compromised at the normal court or are delayed. So we need the Electoral Offenses 
commission that is going to be capable of dealing with all the offenses that are associated with the electoral process. So it is not just enough that people will lose election at the electoral uh, tribunal and then they just get away. I mean, some people will spend three hours, uh, three years in office after manipulating the electoral process and the election will only just uh, be overturned by the court and they still enjoy the loot of um, the three years that they have access, you know, public for. But we need that Electoral Offenders Commission all right. that would prosecute all those that are found to have violated the law. Thank you very much. Right, thank you so much. Indeed, uh, we need to really uh, take a cursory look at um, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill because the benefits, you know, far outweigh, you know, the demerit. Uh, we must say a very big thank you to Olari Waju Suraj. He is a public affairs analyst. And thank you so much for all of your inputs uh, today. We do appreciate them. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's the size of the show for today. We must say a very big thank you to all of you who have uh, stood by to watch. My name is Justin Akadone. And in case you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It's at Plus TV Africa and uh, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on YouTube. I am Messi Boko. Do have a great Monday morning.